Erev Tov, I'm Stephen Benoon and you are watching Israeli News Live. The title of our article tonight, Nuclear War, Now a Reality. We brought this title on mainly because it is really definitely more increasingly a reality of nuclear war globally that could happen at any moment in any time based on the numerous reports of threats, counter threats, near misses, and just really alarming articles that are going on around the world. I want to start off with the Tehran Times, uh, an article we've already reported on, and this was where Russia was to deploy long-range nuclear bombers to Crimea for drills. Uh, there's also it's stated in here, officials in Moscow have announced plans to send some of their strategic missile carriers to Crimea a year after a, the peninsula separated from uh, Ukraine and rejoined the Russian Federation. A source in Russian Defense Ministry said on Tuesday that Moscow uh, would deploy uh, Tupolev 22M3 uh, bomber jets to Crimea as part of a drill uh, to test the combat readiness of tens of thousands of Russian troops across the country. The source, however, did not specify an exact date for the deployment of the bombers. Now, that being said, another article that has come out um, only a few hours ago on Reuters, the title of the article is Nuclear Midnight Ticks Closer in Wake of Russian Crimea Threats. Uh, like I said, this is only three hours ago. It's been a year since Russia annexed Crimea and nuclear rumors are flying. Um, now keep in mind, we are quoting from these articles here. Uh, we realize that, uh, according to the Russian sources there, that they say that, that, that it was actually done by a referendum and the people chose to go back to Russian Federation. Uh, earlier this month, Russian officials speculated about whether or not Russia could place nuclear weapons in Crimea. That's interesting. Wondering about if they're speculating. According to the Tehran Times, Russia is going to do it. And Russia has also said that it is their sovereign country. They have a right to put nuclear weapons wherever they so choose to do so. Uh, according to the article here, it says, Admitting ignorance about what weapons were there now or whether there were any plans to deploy such weapons there. Mikhail uh, Alyanov, uh, an official in charge of arms control for Russian Ministry of the Foreign Affairs, stated that in principle, Russia can do it. In a video apparently intended to mark the anniversary of the annexation, uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin stated that he had considered putting Russian nuclear forces on alert at the time of the annexation. When it comes to nuclear weapons, the idle speculation is never a good idea. In principle, countries can do a lot of things, and in retrospect, leaders may have considered a lot of options, but Ukraine and Crimea have been free of nuclear weapons of more than 20 years. It is in everyone's best interest to maintain that reality. For Russia, introducing nuclear weapons into Crimea would provide neither technical nor strategic security advantages. Uh, Russia decided long ago to remove and eliminate intermediate range missiles under the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty to remove tactical nuclear weapons from the corners of, uh, of the former Soviet Union. While Russia may uh, bemoan its conventional forces strength now, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization is not signifying more challenging, ironically, deploying tactical nuclear weapons in Crimea could result in NATO pursuing options to increase its capabilities. Now, it's kind of ironic in this article here because clearly we already know that NATO is pursuing to increase uh, the military president in cooperation with the United States. Uh, there is a huge convoy making its way across Europe. It's in Germany right now. Thousands uh, uh, of, of people that are involved in this. There are troops, tanks, heavy equipment, uh, lethal weapons of every imaginable sort that are all en route partly to Ukraine and other of the former Soviet uh, bloc nations. There are also protests that are that are uh, that are planned throughout the eastern countries uh, that will be protesting that they do not want American troops nor American equipment upon their soil. Something that we will try to bring more on as those particular uh, things develop. Uh, in another report, and that's only part of the report, you can go to our Facebook page at Israeli News Live on Facebook, 
and you can follow up uh, on these articles. We have posted all of these articles on our Israeli News Live uh, page there in Facebook, so you can follow these and see. Uh, another article, this one here is in, uh, in, a, in, a, in, it's called The Local, it's a Denmark paper, it said Russia delivers nuclear threat to Denmark. Uh, the title here says Russia's ambassador to Denmark warned on Saturday that Danish ships will become Russian targets if Denmark joins NATO missile defense system. And we do, uh, we have heard that uh, the Denmark has uh, chose to be neutral in this particular uh escalation uh, that is going on in Europe now with the NATO alliance members and the EU that is arming Kiev uh, to try to take back the, uh, the, uh, the, the Don Donetsk region in the southeast part of Ukraine. Uh, the article goes on to say tensions between Denmark and Russia were, were ratcheted up a notch on Saturday. Russian's ambassador to Denmark, Mikhail Vanin, wrote in an opinion piece published by uh, Yalan's posting that Denmark has made itself a target of potential nuclear attack by joining NATO's missile defense system. That is some very strong statement there. I don't think the Danes fully understand the consequences of what will uh, what excuse me what will happen if Denmark joins the American-controlled missile defense. If it happens, Danish warships will become targets for Russian atomic missiles, Vanin wrote. Uh, Denmark announced in August that it will contribute at least one frigate to NATO's defense system. At the time, Defense Minister Nikolai uh, Woman said that joining the missile defense system was not a move aimed at Russia. Uh, that Denmark will join the missile defense system with a radar ca capacity on one or more uh, of our frigates is not an action that is targeted against Russia, but rather to protect us against rogue states, terrorist organizations, and others that have the capacity to fire missiles at Europe and the U.S. Um, so anyway, the, the article is, like I said, it's much longer. Uh, it's a very, very serious article, no doubt. And to top it off, Russia is not the only one, and neither are, um, I mean, we, we, we see also, we had reported here that uh, the, the, the United Kingdom had well, uh, there was articles uh, back when Putin was in, uh, was missing for 10 days that the, 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 uh, the Britain had actually had nuclear missiles pointed as for a first strike on Russia. There's even been articles that have that have surfaced that claim that the United States was planning a preemptive strike, a uh, nuclear preemptive strike on Russia. Now, we cannot confirm this uh, is, is whether or not the authenticity of the articles. The articles do exist. Uh, we haven't we, we have been able to confirm that. But whether or not it actually happened or not, we can't say. And this is where it is claimed that an American general, a woman general in the United States uh, Armed Forces, refused to activate the nuclear launch. It said that she was dismissed uh, from her post and uh, as well was arrested. So no doubt the, pri uh, the excuse me the president uh, President Putin when he disappeared for 10 days it wasn't just for some joy ride we know that and and I certainly uh, believe for one that if the president of, of Russia disappears like that it must be for a national security interest without a doubt not just a bunch of uh, propaganda going on people spreading all kinds of rumors of what they think you know whether he's got a girlfriend or whether he's sick or whatever that's nonsense there was a serious no doubt a serious situation that he felt uh, that his country perhaps being threatened that they were considering what to do what would be the options of course we see Russia across the continent uh, went into major military exercises covering nine time zones uh, to show their show of force as well. NATO entered into the Black Sea. Of course, the Black Sea, this is on Russia's southern coast, uh, not to mention Crimea and the Black Sea, bringing a, a whole fleet of warships there to, to do exercises in the Black Sea, showing their own strength and readiness. As well, we find that the United States has a uh, for a very rare situation, its own uh, aircraft carrier actually stops um, in the, um, uh, UK, the UK's uh, port there, a U.S. aircraft carrier in the UK before, the, uh, before Mideast deployment. So the U.S. carrier USS Theodore Roosevelt 
has anchored off the coast of Hampshire in the UK before heading to the Middle East on its global deployment. The warship is moored off the coast as it was too big to sail into the Royal Navy uh, Portsmouth Dockyard. Daily Mail reported with 90 aircraft on board and more than 5,000 American sailors in, uh, on the nuclear-powered aircraft carrier. Uh, again, interesting that the aircraft carrier stopped in uh, at the UK. Uh, again, another strong show of force that the United States has there uh, in, in the event that war were to break out here in Europe uh, unexpectedly. And I, I guess we could say it would not be unexpected, but definitely expected. Uh, RT News is also reporting that North Korea threatens a preemptive nuclear strike over the U.S., uh, uh, over, over the uh, uh, U.S. and South Korea doing their drills. Now that's, uh, that's certainly a nation with a nervous twitch and we know that they have nuclear weapons now. Uh, they have been steadily working on the capability to be able to extend their strike all the way to the United States. Uh, and the article here according to the RT News says here, North Korea's foreign minister said at the United Nations Conference, now this is bold here, at the UN in New York City, uh, he makes this statement that his country would use a preemptive strike if necessary, to, to stop an ever-increasing nuclear threat from the United States. Now, I personally do not think that the United States really has any desire to strike North Korea with a nuclear bomb, but to say that the United States might not actually take and do an invasion on them, uh, on this tiny nation here, to subdue it if it feels that it is being threatened by them on a continuous basis. Yes, the United States may do that, but to use a nuclear weapon, I don't believe that would be so. But, uh, but clearly, uh, they seem to be justifying their means for a preemptive strike on America uh, of, of worrying about the threat. And I guess there must be some concern of a threat. The United States did use an atomic bomb on Japan, and yet Japan did not even have nuclear weapons. And not once, but twice they used nuclear weapons against Japan. Uh, the remarks by Foreign Minister uh, Rhee Su Young were made during a speech at the United UN Conference on Disarmament on Tuesday. He said the joint military exercise being staged by, Korea, by South Korea and the United States are unprecedentedly provocative in nature and have especially high possibility of sparking off a war. Uh, now this was on March the 5th, so it's, it's a couple of weeks old that this actually came out, but the point is, is that nuclear war is becoming a real reality. It's definitely a reality. Uh, he says the DPRK, Democratic People's Republic of Korea, cannot but bolster its nuclear deterrent capability of cope with the ever-increasing nuclear threat of the U.S., he told the Geneva Forum, according to the Reuters. Now, the DPRK has the power of deterring uh, the U.S. and conducting a preemptive strike as well, if necessary. His speech drew a rebuke from the U.S. Ambassador Robert Wood, who urged uh, Pyongyang to stop making threats and rid itself of nuclear weapons. Wood said that the exercises had been held for 40 years and were transparent and defense oriented. And I have to agree with that. that is, it is kind of ironic that they make the threat the way they do because it is true. The United States and South Korea have for ever since I can remember as a young man have always done exercises annually. Uh, so, it, it, again, it is only, it is threats of war constantly, uh, and, and I believe it's getting beyond the stage of rumors of wars. Uh, the United States confirmed also that it, uh, that it has seized North Korea's uh, uh, threat of developing a submarine-launched ballistic missile. This was officially acknowledged by Adam Cecil D. Haney, the top commander, while briefing the U.S. Congress on Thursday uh, about the emerging threats, including China's multi-warhead missiles. Uh, according to the Pentagon, the first flight test North Korea of the KNLSLBM was held in February 2014. Uh, Haney said North Korea is continuing to advance its, uh, excuse me, advance in nuclear weapon capabilities and have a miniaturized warhead uh, capable of delivering a ballistic missile tip, excuse me, ballistic missile. The February test was followed a land-based ejection test in November from a st uh, static launcher at the Simpo South Shipyard. 
Uh, but, but anyway, again, like we say, you know, the, the threats of war, nuclear war, is just a constant. Uh, and of course, then we have the situation going on in uh, Ukraine, and this is what's really kind of got all of this stuff hyped up to begin with. Uh, the United States and the NATO allies are uh, bringing in large amounts of equipment, uh, preparing for uh, what it see, perceives to be an all-out war with Russia, at least a ground war, uh, with a huge threat of the nuclear war possibility behind uh, the people of uh, Donetsk uh, the, in eastern Ukraine are, seem to be bewildered. They say we have signed an agreement in Minsk, uh, in Belarus, in Minsk, and the agreement is not being honored, they claim, by Kiev. And, of course, Kiev throws it back the other way and says it's not being honored by the uh, self-proclaimed proclaimed Republic of, of Donetsk uh, region. And so the war is definitely inevitable. It has passed the deadline of, uh, of the uh, autonomy being given to the eastern part of the country. Uh, the prime minister now of Ukraine has already threatened that they will take back the east as well. And so with the threats there, we realize that war is definitely inevitable. And then to top it all off, uh, the Inquisitor is reporting that Russia plans to seize Ukraine port of Mirapol. Uh, U.S. intelligence officials say Russia is planning to invade the Ukrainian port of Maripol this spring, according to, uh, to at least one top United States intelligence official. Vladimir Putin reportedly considered the Ukrainian port a strategic location. And of course, it is, if you look at the map there, in order for Russia to have a direct access to Crimea, they would need uh, South Ukraine, especially Southeast Ukraine there in the Don, Don, Donetsk region would be vital for them as well. So we can see why Russia may very much, are very well indeed in, invade. It is a very uh, strong possibility. We can, we can see why that would be. Uh, Vladimir Putin has alleged plans to seize the Ukrainian port of Maripol would reportedly include boots on the ground, assistance by pro-Moscow rebels. If the port does come under Russian control, Putin would essentially have a land bridge uh, this is what the article says, and solid supply right in the Crimea region. To date, Russia had not been able to establish a secure supply route through Crimea in 2014. Vladimir Putin was able to annex the Black Sea Peninsula. Um, uh, many in the intelligence community said such a move would indicate a significant enhancement of hostilities in the area. Putin has been forced to employ ferry services across the Kerch uh, Strait to move supplies and equipments to the area. Uh, National Intelligence Director James Clapper uh, had this to say about Vladimir Putin's plans uh, for Ukraine and increased uh, presence of Russian power in the region. He states here, quote, It is not our assessment that he is bent on capturing or conquering all of Ukraine. He wants a whole entity composed of the two uh, oblast regions in eastern Ukraine, which would include a land bridge to Crimea and perhaps a port, especially Maripol. We do not believe that an attack on Maripol is imminent. I believe they will wait until the spring before they attack. <laughs> so it's clear that they do believe that it's going to happen. Uh, so. Gosh, so much is going on. So Kiev says uh, that they cannot withdraw heavy weapons as the attacks persist. Like I said, they're, they're, you know, it's both sides are slinging mud, blaming each other for the ongoing violence. Uh, Kiev uh, accused pro-Russian rebels of opening fire with rockets and artillery at villages in southeastern Ukraine on Monday, all but bearing a week of week old European brokered ceasefire deal. So now they're blaming it on, uh, on the east, on the uh, Don Donetsk region. The Ukrainian military said it could not pull weapons from the front as required under the uh, tenuous truce as long as its troops were still under attack. Of course, the uh, Donetsk region, uh, the self-proclaimed People's Republic there, are saying that, uh, that the uh, Kiev is actually reinforcing, bringing new armament, new heavy equipment in on a regular basis uh, with no intentions of pulling out. Like I said, back and forth the argument goes. Uh, uh, the reported shooting came closer to killing off the truce intended to end the fighting that was killed more than 5,600 people, which rebels ignored last week to capture the strate strategic town uh, of Debaltsev in punishing defeat for Kiev. Kiev and its western allies 
uh, say they fear the rebels backed by reinforcements of Russia. Russian troops are planning to advance deeper into the territory the Kremlin calls New Russia. Moscow uh, denies aiding the rebels. So again, you can read these articles in full at Israeli News Live on our Facebook page or IsraeliNewsLive.com, or excuse me, .org, uh, and keep up with what's going on. We are definitely on the brink of a nuclear conflict. And we can see if it ends up coming uh, to Europe, it'll be, uh, Western Europe will definitely take a hard hit. The United States may take a hit, uh, if, especially if there's a preemptive strike on Russia. Uh, there, Russia would definitely not hold back uh, in, in defending its own territory. And, uh, but at the very least, the situation in Ukraine is definitely spiraling out of control. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom.